Hello, I am Jason Lee, and I would like to discuss mind, in other words, uh, the awakening, literature and film, that's the title of my channel, YouTube channel, with you today again uh, with my book. My book is, my first book, was published in the United States and this second book it was published in the United Kingdom and that's titled Awakening Through Literature and Film and the subtitle is Into the Dancing Light. <clears throat> But uh, you don't have to buy this book. Uh, I'm going, going to explain everything that you and I need to share uh, our thoughts. I, uh, as I said a couple of times already, um, my university, Pusan National University, in South Korea, uh, in South Korea asked me to give series lecture, two week series lecture. And uh, there are eight different pieces of the series. But after that, I put um, two more, one in Korean and one in English. And this is another, time to produce another uh, YouTube video clip. I know that in the United States and also in Europe, as I hear, and also here in Korea, and uh, of course there in China and Japan, I guess, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, especially, particularly here in South Korea, there are so many uh, people already, and also the United States, Americans, who would like to know about the truth. What is the truth? And uh, uh, is there just Christian truth? And is that it, uh, God? and what is the ultimate reality and so on. So when, whenever it comes to truth, uh, in Buddhist dimension, uh, they are to always talking about mind study and that's right. This, this is the study of the mind and what that's what also is being centered always in my YouTube uh, programs. But I do not think it uh, has to be considered only as a Buddhist stuff. There are so many people who are limited to the study of the mind as a Buddhist study, but I go against that. I mean, it's also, it's, I'm not saying it's not Buddhist study, but it is also not only Eastern way of thinking, but Western way, uh, uh, way of thinking. And there are so many people now who repent, uh, regret the uh, fact that uh, Western metaphysics or philosophy has been always dualism. And that's why the Buddhism is more and more popular in the United States, especially, and also in uh, European countries, as I know. But it's not limited to be a new thinking, new way of thought to be called just uh, Buddhist study or Mahayana Buddhism or Theravada Buddhism or, or anything uh, to be called by that name. Especially I like the American society where there are so many different 
branches of Mahayana Buddhism and uh, also Theravada Buddhism of the uh, North Eastern uh, Asian Buddhism and South Asian Buddhism. And they can choose this, uh, to me, it's identical, uh, I mean, ideal way of uh, mind study. But I would also claim firmly that it has been the mind study in the Western hemisphere too, especially um, if you want to name the philosophy that goes against that, this trend, the present trend is, uh, it would be Rene Descartes, I think, therefore I, I am. But it has a lot of problem, like uh, Plato did, who didn't understand what Socrates, his teacher said, I think therefore I am means I compare and contrast this with this or with any other all the time, or I compare the presence of this thing with the absence of thing, this thing. So uh, it always brings the work of comparing and contrasting, but that has a tremendous falsity and it's uh, that you always put your own idea on the upper side or lower side and, and thus the result is that you feel superiority and look down upon others, the other side, or you put here and uh, feel jealousy about uh, others situation and so on and so forth. And also it always goes like, um, uh, I wanna have more, a lot of more money. I, I want to have a lot of more fame. I want to, and also I want to have a lot of more knowledge and or, or even more wisdom and so on. And that's all the elements of the force of looking down upon others uh, or feeling jealous or something like that. Now here on page two, I am talking about uh, the ego problem, the problem of the ego, uh, the, the comparing and contrasting, we call it ego, uh, from the individual mind to the international conflict. That's where uh, war comes, international war comes, right? Not only the two world wars in the previous century, but from the first of the hum human history and to this day, and it's gonna be like, just like that. Uh, there are so many wars and people kill each other. That's uh, horrible and terrible, we say, but we are like that, right? Uh, we kill each other, hum human beings, and uh, it's all from the ego. Ego is good. You can say it's, uh, you can call it something other than the ego or just the beginning of the ego or ego without the negative side or ego of the uh, with the po positive side, pos the positive side of the ego. And I mean, using your mind positively for the other and to serve the other and so on and so forth. It's good. Why is that negative? But it's still negative if you are stuck to it. And if you think this is, this is wrong and this is, this is right and this is wrong and all of others too have to think this way and, and we don't like to get the stressed situation, stressful situation and unhappy situation. However, um, 
not only religion, any kind of religious regions or even Buddhism, but including all elements of life, we find this kind of problem is caused every second and you cannot really measure the length. It's every, every second, every instance uh, or shorter than the instance. I mean, for example, how long is now? Now can be 10 years or now can be one year or uh, 10 minutes or one minute or <laughs> one second and very, very shorter than that, okay? But that doesn't really matter. Uh, in other words, the ego is just constantly uh, brought about in the picture of life. And then it, as soon as it appears, it disappears. It's not only appears and disappears, but it, I would like to say, I said somewhere in, the, in this book too, uh, it's appearing, everything is appearing by disappearing. I hope that would make sense to you too. Everything is appearing and or by disappearing. So uh, we cannot measure the instance and, uh, but we have the habit to measure and we also have it, the old, old habit to judge between good and evil. Uh, so, we like more money, we, we like more wisdom, we like more knowledge, more power, more social uh, fame, and so on and so forth. And then in this book, uh, on the same page, uh, toward the bottom, I am talking about um, the true self and the ego, the, the distinction between true self and then the ego. And I already started that, but what is the true self then? That's the next target for me at this point. The true self is uh, the self in itself, the self in itself of uh, our, it's not a state, but uh, it's over and beyond the state. It doesn't come in to our physical eyes, nor does it in enter the mind's eye. In Buddhism, it's called no eye or no self, and uh, also the true self. In fact, I'm not uh, satisfied with this uh, kind of explanation of Buddhism or um, any religious term because the true self is no self. And what is the self? Self, the negative self is referred to when, you, when it comes to no self, right? Yes. And also the positive self, in other words, the um, infinite self, uh, there's nothing but the true love that's already uh, philosophers, lots of Western philosophers like Hegel and Kant and a whole lot of others called it universe, the infinity. And actually, as a matter of fact, in his book called Meditation, uh, Rene Descartes already mentions infinity. Now, I don't want to be limited to the Buddhist circle who are calling this no self or true self, but I want to be free to use either of this. It's true self and it's no self in the sense that there is uh, in itself, there is no egoism. 
negative egoism to use, in other words, to kill others, uh, not in the war, but in everyday life, it doesn't make sense at all. But we also use the positive self, positive power, the power of now, power, power according to uh, Eckhart Tolle, and power of uh, the real self or real I or the true self. It's not only positive in the sense that we can help others who are poor or who are suffering uh, and so on and so forth, but bottom line is that there is no egoic self. We have no egoic self. In other words, there is no really bit, uh, clear distinction between good and evil. That's what art does. That's what the literature does. That's what even Hollywood blockbusters show. There my emphasis lies. Uh, I already took the examples of Hamlet and also um, Joker. Joker is not to be considered only as a bad guy. I mean, if you use just negative power of the comparing and contrasting ability in yourself, you can say that's a, just a bad guy, nothing at all. But on the other side, it is the true, it is true that whole lot of people over the whole world are attracted. I'm not saying they can explain why Joker is a good movie and, um, you know, to the degree that it got the uh, grand prize at, what is that? Um, Vienna Film Festival. But uh, anyway, they are subconsciously attracted to that movie and they go to the theater to, and appreciate the, the, the uh, movie. And they don't really consciously understand why, but they are attracted. They are attracted and it means the film has that power. Now, we can, find so many examples uh, when we live ev everyday life. Our everyday life doesn't consist of only eating and working, but why not eating and working? The person who is working on the 100th uh, floor of a big, big building has the ego as well as the true self. The true self means the real true love that doesn't go on to distinguish between good and evil right away. It's just filled with, uh, everybody is filled with the original self, original mind, which is universal or uh, more than universal, the infinity would be more appropriate word, infinity or the infinite nature, uh, the original self. There are so many different names for that. God, Buddha, Tao. Uh, if you don't conceptualize it, conceptualization is comparing and contrasting and that uh, brings the problem. I would first like to say that there is no uh, limited self that awares the unlimited self, like Ar Atman. Uh, but without that kind of def defined self, the, it you and all of us, each and every one of us has already the pure consciousness. Pure consciousness, it means it doesn't have any boundary. It's just infinite. 
about Tamsaka Sutra that I'll introduce in some time, would show you, that shows you clear examples of that uh, explanation. So we can say that uh, on the basis of, or the, on the foundation of that real self, we build our ego or uh, uh, either positive or negative. It can be negative when you do negative things, but it can be positive ego. Uh, and you can, you can call it no ego. Actually, I heard Eckhart Tolle uh, saying that, um, you know, he was talking about, uh, about the self and no self and so on with Wayne Dyer. Uh, talking about the uh, his explanation of it, and Wayne Dyer said, uh, "I still am working to get rid of my ego." And Eckhart Tolle says, "No, I don't think you you have an ego. You're egoless. In that sense, or in that sentence." Ego is not negative. Of course, it's just positive power to distinguish between good and evil uh, momentarily or at that instance, which we cannot even measure the length. So on the true self or no self, we build self or the ego as we are born and uh, started to be educated by my uh, um, uh, father and mom, being told to do this, uh, do this, do that, or uh, whatever. And then later on, uh, more people around you, and then uh, teachers, and a whole, whole lot of others in society. Now, I don't want to be limited to call this just the Buddhist stuff as so many people do in the United States and also uh, in Korea and other countries do. Because that's the, just a fundamental problem of human mind and especially literature and film deal with that, okay? A short story shows the uh, true self and, and it attracts you to non-expressible truth. Then what is the work? What is a literary work or a movie? Or to extend that, uh, what is life? What is your life, your individual life? And what today uh, is like? And so on and so forth. To me, it is right to say that we build a dream, just like the dream that we dreamed last, no last night. Dream uh, on the basis of the true self or emptiness in, in Buddhist term. Emptiness means not this or this, no conceptualization, but this and this together. So it's not either presence or absence, but just without uh, any kind of conceptualization or perception. That is how the truth is hidden. It's not hidden, it's, it's everywhere, it's revealed, but we don't find that with our structure of the binary opposition, our mind. So why don't we have a dream and enjoy the dream, positive dream, instead of a, a stressful dream and exert ourselves to use our power to love others as Jesus Christ says, uh, love 
your neighbor as you love yourself and also even extending to this degree, love your enemy. How can you love your enemy if you don't love yourself? So whatever you choose, this and that, you can choose momentarily, but forget about it right after that. And just you are in the real self. You are the real self. And literature and film and others too, but um, uh, for example, cultural products too but especially the art, literature, and film, even Hollywood blockbusters, draw us to that dimension of the ultimate reality and awakens us from the negative dream, from the dream itself, for, for, for instance, from the dream itself, and then we go into the dream again. After we awake, we wake up. So we enjoy the good life uh, with the infinite, with the infinite mind. Then we will actually be wiser in choosing right things, 